All right, so we're gonna we're gonna be in two different places uh, right off the bat. We're gonna be in Luke chapter six. We're gonna look, uh, kind of remember our theme that we're kind of looking at is you know G the parables that Jesus told, and we're looking deep into those parables to see what they really mean. And then we're gonna be in Proverbs chapter twenty-two because that's gonna that's gonna help us understand this parable. So Luke chapter six. Verse 43 through 45. Isaac Laferney, you want to take that one? Yeah. For a good tree bringeth forth not or bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit, for thorn men do not gather figs, nor for a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Now I realize that uh, that this this parable should seem like well that's pretty straightforward. Good comes from a good tree, bad comes from a bad tree. Uh, the problem is in our cult in our culture I don't know that we necessarily understand the things that are actually good and what's bad. And the reason I say that is because just as the, just as, uh, the, the prophets foretold, it, we live in a culture in which good is called evil and evil is called good. And they, we, we begin to train our children from uh, a very early age the opposite of what the scripture is. So people, they have, they're their pre presupposition of what good and evil is is skewed. They don't they don't really understand those things for the most part. I mean sometimes you, you will understand it, but a lot of times it's like you won't. I don't think you I th I think it's it's fuzzy in a lot of people's minds. You have a lot of uh, saints and uh, members of the Catholic Church they speak on this idea that even the virtues can become corrupted and even they're even worse than the vices when they're, they're using excess. Like if you have just like this excess of uh, forgiveness, like you're not a, you're not executing justice or right rightful judgment. And it's just yeah, uh, it causes problems. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. We're um, some Proverbs twenty two is going to talk about a lot of things. I think uh, along along what you're talking about, because precisely what you said, you know that word virtue. People do not use virtue as a word anymore. It's like virtue is really taken out. You ask somebody, well, can you name a couple virtues? And they're like, they're, you know, their mind's going to go blank. They're not going to be able to you know, really spit off what things are, are really virtues. So we're going we're gonna to talk about some of those things. Anybody else got any comments uh, along Luke chapter 6, um, the good tree, bad tree thing? Any thoughts that you may have? All right. Well, look at Proverbs chapter twenty-two. We're just gonna—we're not gonna read this whole thing uh, all at once. We're just gonna take it a couple verses at a time, um, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Noah, or a page of Psalms. Psalms. Are you? Are you there? Verse. Proverbs twenty-two. Are you there? I'm at twenty-two. Yeah. Read verses one through two. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and a loving favor rather than silver and gold. So, where? Two. Yeah, just verse two. So, rich and poor meet together, the Lord is the maker of them all. So, you want to tackle that? How do, why do you, what do you think is going on in that? That's a good tree versus a bad tree uh, understanding. What do you think? Well, what about a good name? What about a good name? I, I know. I know. I'll give you a chance just a second. What do you think about a good name? What, well, what does that mean? You get a good name is like somebody like uh, like you are. Do you have a good name? No, it's 
Like, what would, what would you... <laughs> yeah, it is a good name. That no, was a good name. <laughs> <laughs> but what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Come on. Can, can, can you be relied upon? Can we trust you? You're honest. Yeah, that, that's those are those are all virtues, right? So those are those are what would make a good name for a person. Uh, how about how about like loving favor? Who wants to take that one? I mean, I'll even let you take. I'll even if you have something to say on that on that first thing, you can you can tell me what you were thinking. I was just gonna say like good reputation. Yeah, yeah, you have a good reputation. Well, that good reputation, it goes along with this, with that loving favor, right? It's like, you know, people want you around. You know, they'll, they can, they'll compare you to someone else and they prefer you. That's, that's that loving favor. That's a, a preference for, for that person. And, and then you see that there's, there's a second, there's kind of another aspect that goes along with that. Is that it doesn't matter if you're if you're rich or poor that these things these things apply to uh, to anybody right so it's not it's not it's not specific on your your status in life that you can still have a good name and be a poor person but you can also be have a bad name and be a rich person right I mean we we kind of we kind of know some some you know like uh, George Soros. Does that does that does that do you, anybody know who that is? Does that does that bring? You think he's got a good name? Uh, yeah, YouTube's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you say that YouTube's even canceling you, right? So so yeah, he's a rich man, but he's kind of got a bad he's got a bad reputation because he does you know because his uh, his ethics is questionable. So you you kind of see. That's what we're talking about. That's kind of what we're talking about. So here you have a good tree versus a bad tree, just you know, right out of the chute here. Let's look at verse three. Um, Eli, you want to take verse three? <clears throat> a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. What do you think? What's going on in that one? What about what about this? Somebody that's a that's a good tree. They're going to recognize something, right? What are they going to recognize? They're going to see like. If something's going down like the wrong path almost and that's where he like sees the evil and he like stays away from it absolutely absolutely well said that's exactly what happens so if you're a good tree you're gonna see man that is not right it smells funny I'm out I don't, I don't want anything to do with it you know you'd rather you'd rather miss out than have problems you know it's like no that just there's something that isn't right Count me out. You may not even be able to prove it. It's just you can sense it, because prudence is is like this is like this this virtue that's here. It's like, man, it, it, it's almost like the Holy Spirit's telling you, there's danger here. You need you need to you need to cash out now. You need to go, right? Any more thoughts on that? Let's look at uh, let's look at verse four, Isaac. Isaac D, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So what do we have here? We've got a good tree. It's going to have to do what? <coughs> Be humble and fear the Lord. Yeah, and, and what's the result of, of somebody that shows this humility and, the, and operates with the fear of the Lord in their life? What's the, what's the outcome there? Yeah. Now, riches are not always money, but, you know, riches, you know, you can, there's other things in life that are more valuable than money. So here we have that these things, they're components with, with positive outcomes. So you, if you're, you have humility, you have the fear of the Lord, again, virtues that come along, they are part of a good tree, that they have these things. Again, what is the fear of the Lord? Let, I think everybody knows what humility is, right? What is, I'll tell you what, let's, let's just say it out loud. What's humility? Somebody give me a definition for humility. Go ahead. 
uh, the recognizing of oneself and a kind of inverse surprise, just like you, just like you, uh, not that you think lowly of yourself, but you can like uh, give an accurate assessment of your own ability and sin. Right. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. You know. You may. You may. You may be the smartest person in the room, but you. But you don't make sure that everybody knows it. You know, someone that's prideful. If they're the smartest guy in the room, they want everybody to know that they're the smartest guy in the room. If you're a humble guy, you may be the smartest guy in the room, but you just you you just kind of keep it to yourself. And if it's needed, then you bring it forth. That you're just humble about it. You're not going to poke people in the eye with it. You you're a humble guy. Even if you're even if you're a very talented person in something else, it's you understand. You know how that uh, you know everybody has to start somewhere, and that you're not. You're not better just because you're better. Does that make sense? You're, you know, you realize that it comes from it comes from the Lord, and that kind of results in the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? It is the beginning of wisdom, but what does it mean? What does it, it mean? An, an adherence towards God and His teachings, like a, a submit, almost a like a submittance towards uh, His will and His teachings. Right, you you recognize basically, he's in God's in charge, he's in charge of everything. It doesn't matter how good you are, you can be replaced. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, it goes hand in hand with humility because if you understand who God is, then you obviously understand what you are in comparison. Right, right. You understand where your place really is. I mean, that's that, and that's a humble person too. They understand where they really fit in, and they're not trying to. They're not trying to um, make somebody uh, acknowledge them. They're, you know, they're they're okay being, you know, being the gear system in the transmission, right? Because it's it's kind of like a car. That car may have the biggest engine in the world, but it's going nowhere if that transmission doesn't work. But who? But whenever you start talking cars. Do people start talking about the gear ratio in their transmission? No. No. They talk about how big the engine is. The engine's worthless if the transmission's toast. Right? So that's that's what we're talking about. Um let's look uh verse five. I forgot where I stopped. Where did I stop? Uh, okay. Micah, you wanna take verse five? Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He, he, he that his soul shall be All right. Tell us what that means. That Talk about a good tree here. You refrain from giving yourself to things that are not good. Like you keep your soul away from bad things. Yeah, yeah you're on guard, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're looking out for things that can cause uh, injury or make you trapped. You know, uh, a lot of, if you look around, you see a lot of people that they cause, they cause self, self-inflictions, right? Because they don't, they don't guard themselves. They don't guard their situation. They think, or they may think, oh, it never happened to me, right? So they let their guard down, and then it happens to them. You know, it's kind of like driving down the road. You, you, you. If you're not watching the other drivers, you will have an accident. I mean, you will. You have to be on guard while you drive. It, I mean, uh, and you'll find out. You let down your guard, that's when you're going to have an accident. So the, those guys, they let down their, and that, and that applies to all aspects of life. You, you got to keep your guard up because what does the scripture tell us about Satan? What's, what's going on with him? Yeah, he he's hunting you. He is actively hunting you. You've got to understand that you're a prey in this world, and you need to kind of have a, a, a little bit of a prey mentality, and you guard yourself. You guard yourself against him who's a predator, who's out to get you and destroy you, and, dis- and not just you, but everything that you care about. So you're guarding against those things, and you don't, and, and so that he can't trap you. In in something, and that, and that's 
that's sometimes you know that's where that's where we do when we let down our guard we get into we get into this situation where we we're trapped it's like there's no way out every decision is a bad decision and it's like oh my goodness what do i do everything nothing is going to work out good in this situation and a lot of people get into that um, so here guarding against those things that again the these are all all virtues these are all things that a, a good tree is going to produce in their life they're going to be on guard they're going to be on guard uh, let's look at verse six josh you want to take that one train up a child in the way he should go when he's old he will not depart from it oh man baptists have been using this one for a long time what do you think about that that verse well in the context of what um, everything we just talked about it's hence a recurring theme throughout the Proverbs is fix problems while they're small so they don't turn into much larger ones down the line, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't think we have to be 10 years old for this to apply to us because it applies to everyone. Any problem that comes in our life, right? Any thought or snare, yep. we should be um, accepting the truth and accepting it early on instead of taking the hand down the road and it's going to be terrible later. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a that's a great, um, you know, application of that is that you, you take care you take care of things when they're when they're small um, and you don't have big things. In this case, it's sort of um, where you're laying up your treasures. That's where this entire thing true, is so hard, true. right? Whether yep. it's earthly things or spiritual things like the yeah, silver the, and gold was given in contrast, right? Yep. And that's what was the evil it's treasure. Worth the, the evil treasures of this heart is what Jesus said in Luke 6. At the end of the oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th this is, uh, you know, just uh, let, let, you know, we can even take this to, uh, you know, child rearing, right? When your children are the youngest, you discipline them the most, and then when they're big, you, all you have to do is have a conversation with them, and they're going to listen. But if you never, you never discipline them when they're little, when they're bigger, you won't be able to discipline them. And you and you have to understand that you train, you train them while they're young, while they're small. And of course, any of these, any things that you have deal with in your life if you deal with the issues while they're small it's sure you don't have the big problems you don't have the big problems it, now if you're like oh it's a little thing little sins turn into big sins and people people think oh it's just a little thing it doesn't hurt anybody it will it will grow it will turn into a cancer that I think that's really what this you know, like Josh was saying, it, it, that's really what this verse is trying to communicate, um, and it does apply to children too, because if you're if you start listening to other things, um, there's other things out there trying to train train your kids too, or train children too. Uh, so you have to be aware of what influence is actually coming into a person's life, because everything is trying to communicate their agenda to you. Does that make sense? All the social media, it has an agenda. Parents with kids, they have an agenda, right? As Christian parents, we're supposed to train our children in the love and the admonition of the Lord. What do you think this, the secular world is trying to do? They're trying to train the children to love and, and be an administered unto their Lord. Well, we know who the God of this world is, right? Who's the God of this world? Satan. Satan is the God of this world. And he owns the... It's, it's interesting that the social media the aspect is of the air, and he is the prince of the power of the air. So if you're wondering what they're trying to, to feed your mind, you need to understand. Snuff out those problems when they're small. You find yourself being on it too much, wean yourself off, you know, Guard yourself against those things. If you're seeing some things come up, you're like, why am I seeing these things? Know that you're being hunted, okay? When you're seeing things, you know that they're inappropriate. Shut it down while it's small. Because if you just let it go, oh, it's, I can handle this, you, you're not going to be able to handle it. it it's going to, it, it keeps hunting for you, and it will, it is vicing for your mind and your body and your soul. So you have to you have to shut those things down while they're small. When they're small, you can deal with them. When they get big, man, you got to go to rehab. I know a lot of folks they have they have had issues 
and it's because they didn't deal with it when it was a little, it became a big problem. And it takes years and years and years to recover if they can be recovered. Does that make sense? So be a good tree now. A good tree now. All right, let's look at verse, I forget where we're at. Um, uh, seven? Kaylin, you want to take seven? <clears throat> What do you think is going on there? Well, <laughs> yes. Go ahead, Micah. Okay. So, the attributes of what we're going through is don't become de dependent on other sources. You should be solely dependent. Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, what, what's the what's the what's the numbers right now? That there is, um, I think since since uh, 20, 2020, 2019 or so, the credit card debt has just skyrocketed. Um, you know, people don't have they haven't gotten more money, but they've increased their debt substantially. They've just subsidized their income with credit card, and they. Are becoming slaves to the debtor if you think that you're gonna to be totally forgiven of those debts you think oh well I'll just chat foul you know chapter 13 bankruptcy or whatever and I'll get out of it you're not gonna it is not that you, gone forever it, exactly you know there's gonna be a day and time in which you're gonna to need to you're gonna to need to actually buy yourself a home or buy a car <clears throat> And you know, I'll, I'll just give you an example. The other day, I sold I sold Kalen's Jeep, and I didn't sell it for a lot. I had I don't know. It was well over a hundred people contact me for a vehicle that needed work. Okay, and this is the story that I got from a lot of them. I only have a thousand dollars. I really need that vehicle, and I'm like. If you've only got a thousand dollars, this is absolutely not the vehicle that you need. You need to put two more thousand dollars at least into it, just to make this thing a dependable, reliable vehicle. Otherwise, you're going to be you're going to be on the side of the road. Well, then what are you going to do? Your money's gone. You don't. You probably don't have money for a tow truck. Now you got to get it fixed. You don't have money for that. And it's like just a domino effect of just bad decision after bad. And and actually, he talks about that in this proverb. But that's, you know, that's what we see, that they become a slave to their, to their indebtedness. That, uh, you know, they do not know how to conserve money. Uh, they do not know how to save. You shouldn't, you shouldn't just go out and buy things that you cannot afford. You, it will entrap you. It will injure you. Mo most marriages fail because of money right and it's just because they didn't handle it they became a slave they became a slave and the devil ate their lunch literally so it's funny i, I read this more of a, um it's where you get your sources for your information more than surely <laughs> hey, well that's true too because yes people I mean, <laughs> if the rich rule over the poor right the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender now if you're getting your wisdom from this world let's just say from the media your whole life right yeah you essentially become a servant to it people I mean, they get hooked into that as their source. It's like going to a job almost. It's like this thing that they become dependent on, right? And the longer you do it, the harder it is to break away. Like we just read, um, train up a child in the way that you go, right? You will not depart from it. So yep. the earlier you can get somebody to understand the problems with the world's wisdom, the better. Because it has a kind of a compiling effect it, of all of this. Oh, it's absolutely. You know that you know. I mean, I took it on the lines of you know a financial uh, position, but but it applies in every category of the work of of your life. You know, where are you actually getting your your information from? The world will tell you it's okay to rack up a lot of debt. That shows your wealth. I mean, our government's really bought that line, hook, line, and sinker, right? That's why we owe over thirty trillion dollars in debt. They're like, oh, we're the richest country in the world. We got the richest, we got the biggest debt in the whole world. Um, 
and it, it you know those those chickens come home to roost um, the same thing with other things in this world information wise you know don't go to YouTube to understand all the all the words of the scripture okay you're gonna get all kinds of different thoughts and things so what what do you do you study to show yourself approved unto God a workman who needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth yeah you can listen to some of the things that they say their word is not the gospel okay God's word is 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 very sufficient on its own I think it's also why we shouldn't forsake the gathering of ourselves together because church has a way of making you normal right you, you can't go too far off the deep end if right you're coming back yeah, because I would go way you. off the deep end, wouldn't I? <laughs> well, and if you just were locked in your house of YouTube, getting all your information from there, anybody has a good skill of going off the deep end. Yep. Yeah, you need a you need a good balance of a you know of Holy Spirit off a of Holy Spirit <laughs> iron sharpening iron thing. You absolutely do. So yeah, uh, you can see how all of these things apply in like several different areas of your life, and that's what it is, a good tree brings forth good fruit. So you're looking at and it's it's gonna apply in in other areas. Are y'all are y'all still calling? We're here. Oh no. I'm being a little cool. Alright. Uh where are we at? Eight and nine. Joy, you wanna take that? He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that hath a bevel full of pride shall be blessed. What do you think is going on there? If you live a life of bad decisions, wickedness, that's what you're going to reap. That's what's going to come around. You're just going to live a life full of terrible things are going to happen to you. But you've done terrible things. Right. Bad decisions. Yeah, a good tree understands the law of you reap what you sow. I mean, that, that's really what that verse is telling you. There is a law of reaping what you sow. A, a bad tree thinks, huh? It won't hurt. A good tree understands, oh, yes, it will. <laughs> it will hurt. So, I mean, so does that, does, that, does that help you understand the difference in what that verse is talking about? Anybody have any more comments on that one? Let's look at verse 10. Noah, or Micah. Verse 9, I think it says. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Right? Just if you're a generous, you have a generous heart, you can reap what you sow. Yeah. Yeah, that still goes along with that law, you know. In in the book of Luke, um, I think it's, I'm sorry, no, it's John. God, you know, Jesus, of course, we're not going to, I don't know if we're going to hit that one or not. But he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Um, Press down, shaken together, shall men give unto you. So if you're a giver, it's like God gives back unto to you. And he shakes it down, he presses it down so that you can get more in it. Y'all have done that with your trash can, right? You, you've gone through it, it's full. You're like, is it really full? Mm. And you push it down. Oh, man, it's only half full now. So you you put more in it, you know? You're giving it You're giving it more. Well, that's what, that's what God does to your life. It looks like you're full, and he's like, is he really full? Let me push it down a little more and gives you more. Those are kind of terrible. It's also like the parable of the talents, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, to those that uh, much given, much is expected. So like, you have the people who are who are given a lot, they were responsible for more. And it's not to say that God doesn't expect a lot of you, but it's like he expects what you, what is possible for you. Right. And what is in your capacity. You have not to just like squander it just because you might have less than other people. But if you do, or you are fortunate, you, you need to be willing to help others with that. Absolutely. And, and again, a good tree, when they see a brother in need, they want to be able to help that brother in need. But somebody who's a bad tree, they may actually look over and say, well, I want to help Eli out, but I can't even help myself out. So you're like doing a disservice to Eli when he needs help if you can't help yourself. Does, does that make sense? So God wants to bless you so that you can bless other people. And it's just kind of a circle like that. That, that. That's how he wants to do. It's kind of like, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you do not carry around jumper cables in your car, 
you're gonna need you're gonna you're gonna need to get jumped off. But if you carry around jumper cables in your car, no. it's rare that you have to use them for your own self. The type of people right. who uh, carry jumper cables in their car, you also don't leave the lights on in their car. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's all kinds of good tree Ooh. applications to cars, right? <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, where where are we at? I, I lost my place again. Ten. All right. Who's up? Micah, are you up? Ten. Or did I already have you do? Okay. Uh, Isaac. Okay. Sure. Number ten. Yes, sir. Cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Go ahead and take eleven also. Okay. He that loveth pureness of heart, by the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. All right, so what's going on in these two verses? Let's we'll start at 10. What's going on there? The person that... Uh, a good tree. Yeah. A good tree application. You, The trees that are, like, bad, like, you've got a rotting, infected tree that's kind of just, like, ruining your orchard. It's kind of spreading to the other trees. It's, like, draining up nutrients. It needs, it needs to get rid of it. For the sake of the other trees, it needs to be removed. So you just need to cut it down, burn it, and just, just so, like, the uh, rest of the orchard will be all right yeah yeah you you're not interested in all that nonsense right you're not interested in in those scorners those who cause contention quarreling dishonor it's like no not interested in that stuff it's it actually is it, it's a contagious type thing um i think another verse talks about that what about what about the next verse what is it what does it tell us It's basically the opposite, isn't it? Yeah. So, like those that are honest and speak uh, good things are going to be uh, more personable. They're going to be like have better relationships with other people, right? I mean, it, even a even the, a relationship with the king, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Jesus says, uh, "Right, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." So that's like the ultimate example of that. A absolutely. Yeah. The the king is your friend. When you're somebody that people can tolerate being around. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do 12 and 13. Who's up? You are? Are you up? You're good. <clears throat> the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he, overthrows, but he overthrows the words of the faithless. The lazy man says, there's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. All right. What's going on there? It seems like it's two different things. It may be. Let's talk about them. I tell you what. Start with knowledge. What is what what is uh, what is knowledge? What are we talking about here? Understanding, just say uh, knowing how things work or just how things are supposed to be, as opposed to just like uh, I don't know. no. I I agree. Knowledge is really that ability to uh, to apply wisdom and discretion, right? I mean, it's like. Well, I know how to do those things the right way, you know, knowledge and dis discretion. You'll do it the right way, um, and it even comes with a, you know, a bonus, right? God's protection is on that person who actually apply, who actually lives according to this type of knowledge. Uh, how about how about the next thing that's there? He overthrows the words of the faithless. Or the lazy man part. The 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 lazy man part. Um, I think that means, like, the lazy man. They'll see something like a a problem or something like that, and then they'll do nothing about it. Yeah, I, I can't I can't do it right. That's you know that's kind of that's kind of the way that they approach it. Not only like you know the the they'll have an issue, and uh, you know somebody's like, well, this has to be done. What do we need to do? Do you just quit because you know you're it's it's hard, or what do you do? You, you roll up your sleeves and you're like, we, we got to get done. We got to do it. You're not you're not going to be afraid of what if scenarios, because those man uh, those have prevented a lot of people from doing great works for God because, well, what if? Now what if? You 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 throw you kind of throw that out the out the window. You're not just because it's a what if scenario 
Oh, there could be a line out there. Um, there can always be a line out there. There could always be a line out there. Never zero. Yeah, it's like there's always that potential. There, there's that fear of failure. I want to show you something real quick. I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. All right, skip to the bottom of verse 8. Is it right there? I want you to see this. Okay, in the bottom of this verse, it says, These shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Everybody see that part of verse 8? Mm -hmm. What's verse eight, the what? I'm sorry. 21 and verse 8. It says, They shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. What is number one on the on the list? Cowardly. Yeah, cowardly, fearful. That's these folks right here. That there's a lion. There's a, there may be a lion out there. We can't do it. The fearful are on the number number one on the list of you don't make it to heaven. Y'all see that? God is not interested in cowards. He's not interested in cowards. Um, and man, I've seen that just tackle a, a lot of folks. Of, oh, we might, you know, we might get, we might get uh, arrested. We might, this might happen. To, don't be, don't be afraid, afraid. And I tell you what, when COVID hit, we saw the fearful come out of the woodwork, and it was shameful for the church to be so afraid and I, I'll post it on online I said it then we should not be afraid God has not given us the spirit of fear but power of love and a sound mind and the church was afraid we hit number one on verse on Revelation 21 and verse 8 what if what if it was shameful it was shameful what happened um and I think many churches repented of that. They realized that um, they were wrong. And, uh, and I think I've said it a bunch of times. I'm like, we, we were wrong. I knew we were wrong when we were doing it. And I'm like, how do you overcome this wrongness? Um, so anyway, press it on. Press it on. I'll, I'll get off that soapbox for a moment. But I uh, forgot where we're at. Where are we at now? I think we just um, 13. 13. 13 and 14. We just finished 13. Oh, uh, let's let's do do just do 14 right there. I was going to say 14. That's the, the mouth of the the mouth of strange women is a deep pit, and he that abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. All right, so we got this. We got this allegory that's kind of kind of goes through the whole book of Proverbs, where it talks about. This strange woman or this harlot or whatever that he, that he calls him at the time. What is this? What is this talking about? It's just basically, ma'am. Bad ideas. Bad ideas. Yeah. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say just like a sexual sin. It, it it's 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 more than just the sexual sins. I mean, definitely sexual sins are bad ideas, right? So it it goes even deeper than that. Um, the opposite of knowledge because. Is it in Proverbs 1 through 10 mostly where wisdom is personified as this woman, right? Yes. So you yeah. have like the total opposite happening right now. Yeah. Yeah, in Proverbs you will have you'll have like um, um, you know, a virtuous woman, a married, you know, a married woman versus this strange woman yeah. or this harlot. So there's there is a con there is these two uh, you know, two different vices or, or uh, personifications in the in the book of Proverbs that the strange woman the harlot she's always going to represent bad ideas now some of those bad ideas are sexual in nature some of them they're just they're just bad ideas all around and then the other one is this this woman of wisdom who apply who applies this knowledge in her in her life to do and operates off of discretion so here we have bad ideas and what does it say about these bad ideas? If you, I'm telling you, if you read, if you, when you read the book of Proverbs and you get, I'll see this and you put bad ideas in place of that woman, oh my goodness, it just opens up all kinds of doors of knowledge to you. 
But what what's going on with her right here? What what does she do for you? Those that are not walking with the Lord are going to like fall victim to it, and they're going to uh, succumb to like those ideas. Yeah, it's it's a deep pit, right? It's like you you get yourself in a hole that you can't get out of. Think no, about it says that she's abhorred of the Lord, not that she abhors the Lord. Oh. So it's like of the Lord, which means like she hasn't even accepted or believed what God says at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's true. Not, that's yeah. not a child of God. Right oh yeah, yeah. This person is is so far from from God. They um, and just digs themselves into a, a pit that they can't get out of. Now you think about this, people that do, that operate with bad ideas in, in their life, what does their life look like? They dig themselves a hole. If you, if you don't know anybody like that, you will. You will, you will find, you'll see those people that they have just, man, and they, they have just compounded bad idea after bad idea, and, that's, and that really is what they do. One bad idea after another bad idea after another bad idea, and then I mean they're just they just cannot seem to make good decisions in their life. I've known a lot of people like that, unfortunately. Now, if they would accept God, it's amazing that if they would accept God, He would pull them out. In fact, there's a scripture that says He has pulled them out of the miry clay. He pulled them out of the pit and set them upon the rock to stand. That's exactly what the what. That verse is contradicting here in this passage. We don't always see it. A lot of times she'll throw them the lifeline and it's like, no, I got this. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. We're at the bottom of the pit. That work. Yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll just keep digging until I get myself to the surface, right? Yeah. China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. Where are we at now? Uh, 15? Uh, 15 and 16. Who, who wants to? Yeah. Who's up? Noah? Well, who is found in the heart of the child? With a lot of passion has dried the far from him. He had a practice of foreigner to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely shall surely come to want. What do you what do you think's going on there? Well, in the first one, it's the bear the rod to spoil the child type thing. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's talking about discipline, right? So, so yeah, think about it like this. I mean, a lot of people, they, they think, well, discipline's a bad thing. What is the root word in discipline? Disciple. Disciple. Discipline is not always, it, it's not supposed to be looked at as a negative connotation like it, it so often is. But it, you know, if you discipline yourself, I mean, you discipline yourself all the time, right? You, you go out and you run. You're making, you're making your legs do something that you want it to do better. So to do that means that you have to do more of it. That's called discipline. You have to encourage it to do what is necessary to meet a certain goal. Well, you understand discipline is to mean punishment, it's not being punishment. Right. It's training. It is training. Yeah, it used to be a constructive activity that you're building something off of. Like, you're studying your Bible every day as a discipline. You're getting better at it, learning and growing. Right. If you could be doing anything, like riding a bike it becomes a discipline. It's something that you're learning and growing with, right? And now it's just completely negative for it. Yeah. And, uh, and for children, when if you discipline them, I mean, there it says the rod of correction. Now, what is the rod of correction? Is it, are we talking about uh, a literal rod? It's a means of correction. It may, yes, ma'am. Well, it could. I know. I'm sure a shepherd has whacked plenty of sheep with that rod. They say they will break their legs. Like when the sheep went and all, but they would break their legs. Yeah. Yeah, for those. No, that you can't break your children's bones. Right. I'm saying the shepherds actually did that. Well, you you might have to hurt their precious little feelings a little bit. Um, if that's what it takes. That happens in Psalms too. <laughs> we'll go there. All right, we're just going to press on for now. I think everybody understands the right idea. Uh, how about verse sixteen? What do you what do you see going on there, Dylan? That there are people that want to take advantage of you, and 
Yeah, there are those that they that they are trying to get to that next rung on the ladder of success, and they manipulate people, especially the poor. Like, uh, you know, like lottery tickets. That is absolutely a manipulation of poor people. What are you talking about? I've made a hundred dollars from it. It's <laughs> literally not my thing. Uh, I just know. Uh, I I just know people that don't have money. They spend a lot of money on those to, because they think they're gonna make. They're gonna get rich quick, right? It's a bit of a slothful move. Nobody can force them to do it. So it's there's a two way street here. Yeah, they're manipulated. Yeah. It's, it's they're really manipulated rich. and they're doing something they're yeah. not doing. Now, if they now if they apply to all those things that we just talked about, they would never buy a lottery ticket, probably, because all of a sudden, you, you know, they put themselves in that debtor position, right? They become a slave to this this debt that's out there. So, all right, um, I think that I think anybody got any more comments on that? Let's do uh, seventeen through twenty-one. Who's turn to Micah? Go ahead and read read seventeen through twenty-one. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it, for it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, ye shall withdraw be fitted in my lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord, that I have known to thee this day, even to thee. I have not written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou might enter the words of truth to them that send them unto thee. Anybody have a weird translation there? Yeah. I was looking at the, I think it was the CSB, and it said 30 things. And it, that didn't even make sense. It said what? It said 30 things. So I don't know. Um, in the King James and several other ones, it just says excellent or something like that. I don't know. I don't know where it gets the 30 things. Like but the number 30. Yeah, the number 30. It's weird. It is weird. I thought it was odd. That's usually when there's a secondary definition and they choose the very strange one for a reason we don't know about. <laughs> like if you look up the letter and you'll look at it from the secondary definition, you're like, why would they ever pick that? Because it's clearly not it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I wasn't sure what that meant. I was just wondering if anybody had that. So um, we can, we, it, it, it really is just worth noting. Um, because it is a thing. All right. So, Michael, talk to us on that. What is what is going on in those in that passage? That you should listen to wisdom and apply it. Okay. So we're talking about good trees, right? They're going to hear wisdom and they're going to apply it. In that you should, like how Mary had kept things in her heart, you should and the words written. You should do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you trust in the Lord. It, it relies on truth, right? Yeah. So, yeah, basically everything that Micah just said that that good tree, that person who's a good tree. They're going to hear the words of wisdom. They're going to apply them by knowledge. Um, this is ba that's basically a lifestyle that this person has. Does that make sense? You're not a good tree every other day. You're a good tree all the time. It's a lifestyle. That's what you that's what you live by. That you trust in the Lord and His instructions, counsel, and knowledge. That's how that's how it's a lifestyle. It's like every day I trust in the Lord's counsels and His knowledge and instruction. And I rely on truth and real truth, not your version of the truth. There's no such thing as your version of the truth. There is only truth. Does that make sense? In, in our current culture, there's going to be those who argue, well, I have my truth. That's your truth. No, there's truth, period. It, you don't get to make up truth. It doesn't change from one day to the next. Truth is truth every single day. Of every single week does that does that make sense you rely on it otherwise it's not true <laughs> right if it's gonna if it's only true on Monday but not on Tuesday then that and it fails on Tuesday that means it wasn't true does that make sense all right well truth to me is Monday and it's true on Monday 
and it's not sure after the summer. <laughs> Any, anybody got any more comments on that? Let's do verses 22 through 23. Who's up? Josh, are you up? 22 and 23? Yeah, 22 and 23. Rob, not the poor. He's poor, neither oppressed and afflicted. The Lord will clean for your cause. Spoil the soul of those who spoil the land. Yeah, so whenever you look at these, what, is it, what does it look like for a good tree on, on, the, on that? It, I will put your trust in the Lord in all things. I will defend it. Oh yeah, absolutely. You, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have the same type of mentality as what God does, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna have compassion for the poor. You're not gonna want to oppress anybody. You're you know you're gonna want to help those that you can help that, and, and those that are in need indeed, right? Not just a guy out there holding a sign saying he needs help. Um, you know that that person needs help. You yes, know that, it is showing that like you will have opportunities. Things, yes. And you shouldn't be doing them. And the Lord will plead their cause kind of goes either way. It, it goes um, towards people who have done something bad that God sees, but also people that are trusting God, right? The Lord mm -hmm. will plead for them too. And oh, yes. we're not we're not supposed to be judging people that are believers, right? When we know that they're saved through believing in the Lord. Sometimes um, we get caught up playing God. Playing God basically, right? Right, right. Yeah, I think a good example of that that type of idea is with Sodom and Gomorrah, right? You know, the Lord shows up. He says, "I want to, I want to hear, I want to see if if Sodom is as bad as the cry that I've heard." Right? He goes to check it out. Um, so, and then makes a judgment call based on that on on how that relationship <laughs> unfolds. Uh, in their case, it didn't unfold very well. They had a chance. They had a chance, and uh, they failed. Yeah. And, and we would have jumped, we would have jumped to, we're not God, though. We would have jumped to the conclusion and been like, take it out. And Lot would have been, it's dumb. And Lot would have been in there Yep. If, if it was up to us. That's it's true. It's sort of like uh, Jonah would have said, wipe out Nineveh right now. And it was right. full of people who didn't deserve it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, God said, like, give them a chance. Yeah. Give them a chance. And he does that. He gives everybody a chance. So pleading their cause can go. Right. Direction. Let's take uh, 24 through 27. We, we're almost done with this. If y'all can just hang in there just for a few more minutes. Caitlin, you take those. Be no friendship with an angry man, and a furious man shall go, thou shalt not go. Leave thou learn his ways, and give a snare to thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are sureties for death. All right. Talk to us on that one. What do you think is going on? Oh, the 27? Oh, yeah, did you not go to 27? Uh, yeah, yeah, go to 27, I'm if sorry. If thou have nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bread from under thee? All right. So what what is going on in those two or four verses? Um, the first part is just telling you where someone is speaking with anger. Like, it's not something from a good tree. No, it's, it's not coming from a good tree, right? That's the most infectious because they can be very easy to get caught up in anger, you know. So I can't, I can't, I can't look, I can't stay online too long. If I, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, <laughs> that's all that, all that stuff, all like, that's like, you know, Harrison Butker right mm -hmm. now. It's just like, right now, TikTok is just like a, it is a war zone. It's just like, you have the people defending Butker, you have the people calling, like, Butker just like a horrible, hateful, Latin mass extremist, and it's just like, I can't. You know, you, you bring that up, um, you know, everybody's going to have passion about certain things. But the scripture says, you know, you can be angry and sin not. But this person is angry and, and sins when, and, and that's, that's what's going on here. It's like they, their anger gets out of control. Anger that's out of control is not is, righteous anger. Yeah, it's not righteous it's not righteous anger. It's it's out of control. This person, they have lost control. Well, what is actually um, of the you know when we start start talking about the fruit of the spirit, what's one of what's one of the 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 pieces of that fruit? Self control. Self control. Yeah. yeah Self control. That's, that's the opposite. In uh, twenty five, we see another situation going from bad to worse, and it says, "Lest thou learn this place and get a snare to thy soul." Right. So now you're you're taking on. A bad idea that you imbibed, and it's just producing more bad for them. 
Right, and 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 really, this this kind of foot stomps what I said earlier that things that are not virtuous are actually often contagious. So if you're if that's who you're around all the time, you will start um, presenting some of those attributes. And uh, I mean, you 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 felt that before, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. It it's 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 like you start. You know, you don't want to, but it's like you, it's like you feed off each other. If someone is angry around you all the time, you're going to get angry. It makes you angry. Yeah, it, it does. It just banks up, basically. It does. Like you said, be angry and sit not. The next one is, why not the sun go down and find your rest? So it's like, <laughs> how often should it reset every single day? Every single day. It makes yes. you think how you're a roommate. You could listen to that song and you could, it sounded angry. Like, you know, that metal screaming angry. And you would wait. I think you wanted to yeah, it must have been pretty obvious because he quit doing that. <laughs> yeah, if y'all can imagine sleeping the nine inch nails, I'm like, oh. I mean, he's playing that music. What was he trying to create? Situation? He created exactly the situation that music creates, right? And then he's confused about it. Why yeah. was that? Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah, yes sir. I was going to point out that it kind of goes, like I said, angry here, but it can be anything. Like if you're, if you're always acting sad and depressed, people around you, they, they feel that and they kind of, they kind of feel the same way, kind of mm -hmm. how humans work. Yeah. So if you're angry all the time and that's just bad witness in general, and you're going to make kind of like a little lemon lemon or whatever it swallows the whole batch that if you're angry all the time everybody around you they're going to feel that and they're going to be angry as well right so but a good treat in this sense is if you're happy you know if you're happy you feel good you know you're laughing all the time other people they feel that and they kind of appropriate that for themselves you kind of like i know you kind of share it off each other. yeah but you you have to be a person who wants to though yeah okay? If the person just wants to be angry, they're going to be angry. I think that's what this is talking about. These people want to be yeah. mad about something. They look. They just look for a reason to get upset. I'm just saying on the part of 26, no. where it says, let's, or let's you learn his ways. Where you learn his ways yeah. That's kind of what it is. No, I agree. I agree. It, you know, and if you've got someone that they really want to enjoy life, and they get, they will want to be around somebody who enjoys life. It, it makes them feel better. And, you, and sometimes you have to recognize yourself. You know, do you, do you put your self in a position in which you know your kind of your buttons get pushed so to speak you know if, if you realize that there's triggers there you may have to remove yourself from that trigger I mean, right, Mr. Mitch, I need to quit my job right now it may be it may be I was actually about to say that I've, I've been there I've been there oh uh, let's do 28 and 29 and we'll be and we'll we'll be done who's who is it uh, yeah. Okay. We moved on to the ancient landmarks which thy father have set. Be a thorough man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before our men. All right. What do you What do you think is going on in twenty eight? We'll take it first. We got um, this kind of reminds me of a uh, old adage that kind of modern day like conservatives use. This is like you see a fence in the woods. Like, you don't just, like, tear down that fence just right away. If there's, like, some kind of law or tradition that's, like, being held, or, like, in this case, like, this ancient landmark, you don't want to just, like, remove it or destroy it. Like, you need to understand its purpose there. Like, why was it set up? Is this something that's still important? Like, we, we can't just be needlessly, like, removing these things to, right. be to our detriment. What, what, are, what are fences? What do they, what do they usually mar uh, mark? Boundaries. Either, yeah. Boundaries. Yeah, yeah. There's... He says, remove not those those boundaries. You know, those boundaries are set up for specific reasons. Yeah, you certainly should understand why is the boundary here. A lot of people, you know, especially in our culture, they they want to tear down all boundaries. And God says, it, it's actually good for boundaries to be in your life. And these ancient boundaries, what are those boundaries? Well, that's really what the Ten Commandments are, right? They're, they're ancient boundaries that God has established in your life to draw to help you understand His holiness and righteousness 
really that image that he's created you to live in, he has, he has put it in a boundary. You go outside those, those parameters or try to tear those down, and all of a sudden, you know, society falls apart, basically. Right? Anybody got any, any, any more thoughts on that? It definitely does not apply to upholding um, traditions that go against the truth. Because for oh, one, they would not be ancient. They would not be everlasting truths. Right. God's word. But not only do people want to tear down the true ancient traditions, they want to uphold their own that came much later and say, no, this is the truth. And that is right. how almost every religious institution in the world works. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're yeah, fast. I know. I just, whoa. <laughs> 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 yeah, there. You know, that's that's why. Um, you know, let you know. Let's just talk about it. And, and you know, an ancient boundary, grace. The first time it's mentioned is where. Noah. With Noah, right? He found grace. He found grace in the other. The first. There's a law of first mention. It's a boundary that God puts in the Scripture for a purpose. What is who does who get who has grace in the eyes of the Lord? Somebody who agrees with God, right, and willing to build an ark and to help other people survive the judgment that's coming, and who works for God their whole life. That's that's not they're not saved by the work. The work is what happens when they recognize God's rule that He's the He is. That he has a fear of the Lord in his life. That, that's who. That's who God applies grace to. He, I'm, I'm trying to think of an opposite way to apply this. Like, is it Gideon where he, he destroys his dad's um his dad's idol? He, does. Title, he right? does. So there's an ancient landmark set by the, the father that was not truly an ancient landmark according to truth, right. right? And his dad basically approves the action and it happens too. So yeah. it, it kind of shows this is not a physical thing in the way that um, the world often applies it. Yeah, um, th there's another one that's done. You know, Moses he 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 created that that serpent in the wilderness, and it was it ended up becoming a symbol of worship. And I believe, mm -hmm. uh, was it Josiah that or Hezekiah that destroyed it because people people had turned something that was meant for good into something that was evil, and he got rid of it. Now, so so later on in Gideon's that. story, you also have the golden apple though. Which you do, the, yeah. right? Sorry, yeah. yeah. And that turns into a problem, too. Yeah, he, well, Josiah takes out all kinds of um, idols that have become something good. Right. So it sort of shows this is not a physical um, tradition aspect in a way right. a lot of people would say. That. Yeah, so, so yeah, the ancient, the ancient landmarks go back even further. Yeah, it, it sounds like they're talking about everlasting landmarks. Everlasting. Which would be yeah. just the truth. The yeah. truth. Right. Um, the final one we have, uh, we have verse twenty nine. What do you see going on in that verse? Uh, a man who is uh, um, has worked hard to be good at what he does is not going to be doing it for people who are just like nobody. He's going to be a, he's going to be doing important things so that he's if you like hone your craft like you too, you too can do your craft before kings. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, that's almost the same language I used uh, in my note. Yeah, he's a hard he's a hard worker. He's a skilled worker, and basically, he's going to experience promotions. He's going to be he's going to start doing his work for more and more important people, right? That's a nice prosperity gospel going on. Yeah, so this is the uh, prudent man. Yeah. It's prudent the prudent man. Yeah. It it's not a, it's not exactly a, a prosperity gospel. But it is, um, you know, when you apply God's standard to your life, you will experience God's blessings on your life. Now, that doesn't mean that sometimes we don't, we don't have trouble. But at the same time, you know, God's going to look at you. He's going to bless the work of your hands. So if you apply, but you've got to be a good tree. You know, a lot of people, they, they want the prosperity gospel without being a good tree. <laughs> You know they're rot they're rotten to the their core is hall hollowed out, but they still want the blessing. They don't want to be diligent either. Yeah, that's you know that's probably the biggest problem with the prosperity gospel is that its core is is empty, 
or rotten, it's deteriorated, there's nothing, there's no substance in it. But if you apply God's standard where, yeah, you found grace in the eyes of the Lord, what does that person look like? He looks like Noah. You look like, you see Abraham, okay? The first time love is used. Another one of those ancient boundaries. Love is used between a father and his son who was willing to give his son back to the one who gave him. That's love. Also, that son's willing to uh, be bound by his father just like on the altar. Because at this point, like Isaac's, Isaac's like a young man. He's like late teens, early 20s. Right. And his father's like in his 90s. It's like, okay, son, I need, to lie, I need to lie down on this altar right here. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Now, now if you take, now just think, if, if we would take that definition of love and apply it. Love is not just love, is it? it is. Love has a price. What well, greater love is this than a man who's willing to set down his life for his own friends? There you go. There you go. Final thoughts on any of these? Hope y'all got something out of it. I know it was a little bit long, but, uh, you know, uh, it is hard to just teach through the Proverbs and not go a little bit long. Hopefully you got something out of it, though, and, uh, and uh, you will grow and become better people for it. We don't always make it through a whole one one night. But... Woo! Yeah. yeah. We probably, we probably push this, this one. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Micah, would you close us out? Yes, sir. Dear Lord, uh, I want to thank you for giving us today uh, to set aside to learn about your word with a group of followers and to iron and sharpen iron with each other. And I want to uh, mention a few people who are sick. Uh, my name's Chrissy and Miss Amy. Russell's family uh, that go to church here. And the other Russell family, they need some prayer too. And please be with uh, mom's side of the family as they have a lot of people that are trying to figure out problems. Uh, please give them guidance and the doctors to, to help uh, guide them to figure out how to uh, appropriately uh, move forward on what they need uh, soon. And please be with us uh, throughout the week. Please let us uh, be an example for you and to lead others to Christ. And to let us to live each day for you. And we send pray. Amen. Amen.